Shirley Towers is one of three high-rise blocks of split-level flats in Southampton, Hampshire, managed by Southampton City Council. It has 150 one- and two-bedroom flats and houses between 350 and 400 tenants. At 20.09 on the evening of the 6th of April 2010, a call was received in Hampshire Fire and Rescue Services control room. Fire and Rescue, what's the address of the incident? Hi, it's Shirley Towers. Got a fire on the ninth Sorry, floor? Sorry, Shirley Towers? Shirley Towers. OK, on the ninth floor, what flat number, please? 72. OK, flat 72, and what's on fire? Within five minutes, the first fire crews had arrived and were quickly joined by others. Before the evening was over, two firefighters, Alan Bannon and James Shears, had lost their lives. People have been forced to leave their homes in the last two hours after a fire broke out in a block of flats in Hampshire. Crews were called to Shirley Towers on Church Street shortly after 8 o'clock this evening. The fire broke out on the seventh floor. It's not yet been confirmed what caused it, but police say it's not being treated as suspicious at this time. It was out just before 1 o'clock this morning. Hampshire Fire and Rescue has described the deaths of its two firefighters as not only a devastating loss to the service, but to the whole fire service community, adding they will be sadly missed. Tributes have been paid to two hero firefighters who died saving the lives of others. James Shears and Alan Bannon were tackling a fire in a tower block in Southampton. The men were today described as valiant by the head of Hampshire's fire service. The next day it was announced a full investigation would take place. This is the story of that evening, the investigation and the impact on Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service. Uh, this was a, an enormously tragic and difficult incident, both for individuals, personally, professionally, and for the organisation as a whole. And one of the things I think one has to do is remember that these incidents have in them the seeds of learning that we need to take away in order to make sure that we can best protect our staff and indeed firefighters from across the UK in the future. So one of the first things that we did after the press conference in the morning was actually to establish a dedicated accident and investigation team, taking some of our very best officers who hadn't been involved in the incident and set them to work initially collecting data about exactly what had happened. As you can imagine, there was an enormous amount of data, there was an enormous amount of activity from the police, from the health and safety executive, from all the agencies. Their job was to, firstly, to create a timeline of what actually happened at the incident, get a very clear picture so that we could understand what went wrong, what people didn't understand at the time, so from that we could draw the lessons of how to prevent these things happening again. Shirley Towers was constructed in 1967. It has 16 levels, with 150 flats in total. The split-level flats have stairs either up or down from the front door to the living accommodation, which is spread over three levels. The fire started in flat 72 on the ninth level. The residents had draped a curtain over the top of an uplighter lamp in the lounge while hoovering earlier that day. They later turned the lamp on and then noticed a burning smell, but thought it was outside. A little later, the resident realised it was the curtain and pulled it out of the lamp and attempted to extinguish it using a bottle of soft drink. The alarm was then raised by a neighbour who called 999. This is an identical flat to number 72. The first firefighting team, Red 1, were sent in to fight the fire. A second team, Red 2, of firefighters Alan Bannon and James Shears, were sent into hose manage for Red 1. The firefighters, on entering, climbed the stairs to the lounge and kitchen. The fire was in the lounge, but Red 1 did not detect the fire due to the thick smoke. They commenced a right-hand search pattern, using the walls to guide them. They climbed the stairs to the second floor landing, where the bathroom and toilet were past the fire door which was propped open by the occupant and continued up the stairs to the third floor where the two bedrooms were located. 
Here, they opened windows in both bedrooms to help ventilate the smoke. Red 1 then met Red 2 on the bedroom landing, and as the temperatures suddenly rose to unbearable levels, they realized they needed to exit the flat urgently. The teams were unable to escape downstairs due to the fire in the lounge. Red 1 managed to escape the flat by climbing the stairs and going through the emergency exit door into the 11th level corridor. But all contact with Red 2 was lost. Tragically, firefighters Bannon and Shears were unable to withdraw to safety.